Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be showing you how to play Rome in a day. The Roman Empire has fallen, but with this tragedy comes a great opportunity. Work with other players to divide and claim the lands and buildings of the fallen empire. Larger sets of lands increase your territories, but smaller sets come with gems that'll make you richer. Each round you'll choose how to divide your lands into sets, and you'll claim sets from adjacent players to improve your empire. But pay attention, because adjacent players will also claim territories from you, and only the most cunning player will be remembered as the victor. So first of all, let's have a look at the setup and how we got to this point. So we'll set up as if it was a three player game. So each player needs a player screen, a set of tiles shuffled up into a draw pile. All of the tiles in the game have a coat of arms on the back. So you need the one that matches your player screen and a pair of choice cards. Each player has a big and a small choice card. Shuffle up the building cards and deal one to each player. And then each player gets the buildings that are on their card. Give a reminder tile to each player. These are going to remind you which side you're passing tiles to in the current round. The yellow half tells you who you're going to take tiles from and the red half tells you who's going to take tiles from you. In the first and third rounds, it goes with the yellow half on the left side, and then in the second and fourth rounds, you flip it and the yellow half will be on your right side. Each player gets four gems. This is their personal stock, and we're ready to play. And now we're all set up. Let's have a look at how to play. The game takes place over four rounds, and each round has four phases. There's exploration, division, selection, and expansion. And all of the players play the phases simultaneously. Phase one, exploration. Turn over the top five lands from your stack and then take the top two buildings from your card and put them on the first two. This is done so it's visible to all players. The buildings have to go on these first two tiles. You can't move them somewhere else. Now in phase two division, we need the player screens. Hide those five lands out from the other players and you're going to divide these tiles into two sets in any ratio. So you could have two and three, you could have one and four. If you want to, you can even have zero and five. However you choose to divide them up, you put a gem from your stock with the smaller set. Remember, you can't move or rearrange the buildings from the lands that they have been placed on. Once everyone has divided their lands up, we can remove the screens and carry on to the next phase, which is phase three, selection. Now it's time to look at your neighbor's lands and see which side you find the most appealing because you're going to get to take one of these piles. Your reminder card will remind you which neighbor you're taking from and which neighbor is going to take from you, which might help you make your decision of what you want to split. Your building card will also remind you which way around your reminder tile should be. We're in round one, so it reminds me that the yellow should be on the left. So looking at red's piles, would I like more tiles? Would I like the gem? I have a big choice card and a small choice card. I lay down which one I would like between myself and my opponents, but bear in mind that somebody is going to be taking tiles from you as well. And we can reveal the cards and take that set from your neighbor. So I've chosen the big set. I would get these tiles. Red has chosen the small set from greens, perhaps hoping that they would still have the large set. Any gems that you get are kept and added to your stock. And green is taking my big set. So at the end of selection, everyone will have two sets. One was originally theirs and one that their neighbor left for them. Then in phase four, we have expansion. This is where we are going to add the tiles to our domain. Now in the first round, you can connect them however you like, as long as the tile is touching at least one side of something else. In future rounds, you will add tiles adjacent to tiles already in your domain. You must add all the lands you just got in phase three. And remember, if you just got buildings on your lands, you can't move them to other lands. And the way to do this is all to do with the buildings, which incidentally, you can stand up by the way, if you like, we're looking from bird's eye. So that's why I've laid them down. Now buildings in this game would very much like to be on or adjacent to terrain that is the same color as them. So the yellow mill would very much like to be next to the yellow fields. The wineries want to be on or next to vineyards, which we haven't actually seen the purple tiles. There's one of those. So I would probably want to arrange them like this, for example, and know that in the future, I'm going to be hunting for wineries to go next to here and maybe more fields to keep expanding this. And also know that next turn, I might get one or both of these buildings that are going to be coming out. So I might want to keep an eye out for that terrain as well. And so at the end of this expansion, we've made a good start with a few nice fields. Green has ended up with an antique theater next to three town quarters and an olive grove next to an oil mill. So some nice color matching there. 
Red's perhaps not quite been so lucky. They have got some tiles to get started with, but no quarries yet for their workshop. That's something for them to look out for as more tiles come out. They have ended up with more gems than anyone else, which can be a way of scoring a lot of points at the end of the game. At the end of the round, everybody flips their reminder tiles over, and we're going to be taking and giving in the opposite direction for the next round. At the end of the fourth round, it's time to count up our scores, and there is a lovely pad included in the game for it. And so as the grey player, I can look at how much my oil mills are worth, the green buildings, I've got none, so zero. My wineries are worth a point for every space in the purple area that they are next to or on. So this one here is quite simple. It is adjacent to this one purple area and is worth one point. It would also be worth one if it was on that space. If it was over here though, it'd be adjacent to no purple and be worth nothing. So this building is worth one point. This one here is adjacent to an area that's one, two, three, four, five tiles long. So that's another five points. And then this one is adjacent to both of them. And so would get the five and one point again. So five twice and one twice, that's 12 points for those wineries. Now the mills, this one is adjacent to some lovely fields. So it's going to be worth one, two, three, four, five points. But this one here sadly didn't get adjacent to anything. So isn't going to be worth any points. The antique theater is next to three reds. So it would be worth a lovely three points. The workshop's just next to a solitary quarry. So that would be a point there. And we also get points for our gems. Your building card has a little reminder on there. So for one, two, three, four gems, I would get nine points, taking me, in this example at least, to 30 points. The player with the most points is the winner. If there is a tie, the player with more land tiles in their possession becomes the winner. And if there is a still a tie, the tied players all share the victory. So there we go. That is how to play Rome in a day. I hope that has given you a good start and you're ready to dive into your own games. And I hope you, the rules learner, wins. Of course, if everybody watches the rules video, you're going to have to bring your A game. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you'd like to see more from me, I've got more rules videos and plenty of playthroughs on the channel. And you could subscribe if you'd like to know when more go up. And there are also ways to support the channel in the description. Thank you so much for watching, though, and I will see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.